we're going to build on top of some of these ideas as the whole topic is going to be. So we're now going to be integrating functions where the input value for x is no longer just x. This time it is things like this, like ax plus b, meaning that a and b could be constants. So for example, it's kind of easier to see um, what an example of this might look like. So I'm now no longer going to be looking at integrating like cos of x. I want to know how to integrate cos of 3x plus 1, or cos of 5x minus 2, or sec squared of 12x plus 7 over 4. Okay? I want to know how to do functions that look like this. So again, because integration is just the reverse of differentiation, it is anti-differentiation, we're going to look at what we differentiate and see what, that, see what something differentiates to and use that to help us integrate and go backwards. So what does d differentiating with respect to x and um, sine 3x plus 1, what is the sine 3x plus 1 when you differentiate it? 3 cos 3x plus 1. So if I want to integrate cos of 3x plus 1, I know it's going to be something to do with sine of 3x plus 1. But actually, there's something else I need to do to counteract the fact that if I were to differentiate this, would I get this? I need to times it by a third as well. Let's just think about why that happens. If I was going to differentiate a third sine 3x plus 1, let's just quickly differentiate that bit that we've got there. We're going to differentiate this. That would differentiate to a third times 3 cos 3x plus 1, which simplifies to just cos of 3x plus 1. Okay. So what we now have seen here is for any expression where the inner function is ax plus b, or even just ax, even if that b part wasn't there, you integrate it as you would normally do, and you divide by a. Like here, we integrated the cos of 3x plus 1 just how we would expect it to be. We'd expect it to integrate to sine of 3x plus 1, but we had to divide by 1 over 3 to counteract the fact that when you differentiate it, you get that extra 3 that comes from it. Remember when you differentiate this, this is the derivative of blah. So in this case, we're dividing by the derivative of blah. And it only works when that derivative of blah is a constant. This will not work if the derivative of blah is a function. And you'll see why when we get to that later on, because it becomes much more complicated. So we're going to try and use this idea for some of these things, uh, for some of these questions, OK? So this time I want to integrate e to the power of 3x. Well, we know that e to the power of 3x should go to e to the power of 3x. But we have to counteract the fact that it's a 3x here by doing it as 1 over 3 e to the 3x plus c. What you should probably do at this stage of your integration is you should check this by differentiating it in your head and seeing if you come up with the right answer, OK? You would get a third times the derivative of this, which is 3, which gives you the 1 e to the 3x, OK? And obviously, the c will disappear, because when you differentiate the constant, you get nothing. So this one, what kind of thing would we expect this to go to? It's going to definitely be an ln of 5x plus 2. And it's going to be a 1 over 5 because of the extra 5 that we've got here. If you want to think about how this would differentiate, I'll do this with the red pen and then I'll get rid of it. If we were going to differentiate this, it would be 1 over 5 times by 5x plus 2 times by the derivative of that, which is 5, and the 5 and the fifth would cancel and end up with 1 over 5x plus 2. Not particularly clearly written there. I should have written that a little bit more clearly, perhaps. So this one, we've got 2 sec squared of 3x minus 2 dx. Now, this doesn't look very nice, but this is basically just a sec squared of some kind of linear function of x. What does sec squared integrate to? Tan. So we know for sure it's going to be a tan of 3x minus 2. You've already got the 2 that was there previously, so we're definitely going to leave the 2 there. And then we're going to divide it by 
the three that was here. Really quickly, if we were going to differentiate this, I'm just going to differentiate it down here and then I'll rub it out afterwards. I would differentiate this. I would have the two over three. I would get sec squared, three x minus two, and I would multiply it by the derivative of blah, which is three. So I would get the threes cancelling, and you do get two sec squared three x minus two. Okay, that's what would happen if you differentiate it, and you can check this when you're differentiating it to see if it works. Yes, Sadia. Of course. Why is the first one three common root one root one third five? These are like separate questions to each other. This was me saying this thing differentiates to this. So now that I know this differentiates to this, if I wanted to integrate something which is a third of the size of it, it will integrate to something that is a third of the size of this. OK? Have a little think about that. It will be worth you spending some time having a, a quick think over that as well. So we've got a few of these ones as well. Now, this is, this is a little bit confusing in some ways, because there's going to be like a double bit of division that's going to happen here. We normally know how to do this from, uh, from like year 12 stuff. So we've already got a 3x plus 4 cubed. So it's going to be a 3x plus 4 to the power of 4. We've increased the power by 1. We have to divide by the power. That's what we would normally expect it to be. But there's something else we need to do. Good. We also have to counteract the fact that it's a 3x, and it has to be a 1 over 3 as well. So it's actually a 1 over 12. 3x plus 4 to the power of 4. Let's just really quickly think about, if you were going to differentiate this, just to show you that it would work, if you were going to differentiate this, you would have the 12th, you would bring the power down, and you would reduce the power by 1, and you would multiply by the derivative of the bit that's inside because of the chain rule. The 3 times 4 is 12, the divide by 12 means that you just get the single term, so you just get it as a 1 outside the front, OK? I highly, highly recommend differentiating your answer and seeing if you've got this, if you've got the question. <laughs> Particularly, well, for two reasons. One, it's good practice to do, to see that you've got the correct answer. But two, it means your differentiation will get even stronger. If you're very bad at differentiation, I would be careful about differentiating your answer to see if you've got the right answer, because you might differentiate it wrong and make yourself doubly confused. OK, so we've now got. Um, this one, the sine of 1 minus 5x. Well, let's just not worry about this thing inside here for a second. What integrates to sine? Minus cos. So it's going to be a minus. Let me leave a gap there. Cos of 1 minus 5x. And what do we need to divide by? We need to divide. We have to have the dividing by minus 5. So those minuses are going to cancel. And we've got a fifth cos of 1 minus 5x. We know that cos will go to minus sign, but the chain rule will then multiply it by minus 5. So the ne negatives are going to cancel. And the 5 and the fifth are going to cancel to give us just the single sign that we have there. Is this one going to be an LN kind of question? No. no. OK, so I'm going to rewrite the left-hand side for a second. I think that might make things a little bit easier. So I've got 1 over 3, 4x minus 2 to the power of minus 2. I've brought that whole thing there with the minus power, but I've still left the 3 as like a fraction like that. So we would expect this to integrate to. We're going to have a 4x minus 2 to the power of minus 1. We're going to increase the power from minus 2 up to minus 1. Pardon? We're going to divide by minus 1, because that's just what normal integration would be. So it's going to definitely be a negative. We've got the third that's there as well. And we need to divide by a quarter. We need to divide by 4 as well. So it's going to be a twelfth. Maybe I'll do that last bit slowly. There was the third that was already there. And we also need to divide by 4. We need to multiply by a quarter. So the final answer should be minus 1 twelfth, 4x minus 2 to the power of minus 1. Let's just check that this is going to integrate correctly. First of all, when you bring the power down, we've got minus a twelfth times minus 1, which is going to give us positive a twelfth. And then we're going to multiply that by 4 because of the derivative of the bracket, 
which is uh, 12 times 4 is a third, which gives us the same thing that we've got here. Last one, let's make a bit of space for myself because I've definitely crammed this in. I'll draw a line to try and, actually I won't draw a line. Okay, so we've got 10x plus 11 to the power of 12. So it's going to be 10x plus 11 to the power of 13. And we're going to have to do 1 divided by the, pa the new power, which is 13. And we also need to times by 1 over 10. So when you get quicker at this, you'll probably be able to do this all at once. And we should have, it's 1 over 130, 10x plus 11 to the power of 13. Again, oh yeah, I've, I've not been putting plus c in any of these places. I should have done plus c. You can see after you've done all of that hard work how you can't even be bothered to put on your plus c at the end as well. Plus c. Let's just double check that that works, right? So you've got 1 over 130. What are the things that's going to be times by in the chain rule? The 13. I'll bring the power down, and then I'll also take the derivative of the x out. So that's a 13 and a 10, or 130. They're going to come together to make it just the 1 that I have there. The power will have reduced from 13 down to 12. Not very easy, but you will get better at this, OK? So I want you to try these four that we've got here. I'm going to leave this bit on for the video when we go through these. And then you're going to do the exercise, which I've printed all on one page just to try and make it a little bit easier for you to do some of the recognition of it. OK, so you've got a few of these to have a quick go out here. I don't think these should take you longer than a minute. So I'm going to leave it recording for that minute and then we'll check these and then you'll do a bit of practice for the rest of the lesson. This is one where I think actually re-watching the video will make more sense rather than just looking at a page. When you look at a page, this is going to make no sense. But when you hear it talked back, it's going to make more sense. goes to sec x tan x? What differentiates to sec x tan x? Good. Sec x goes to sec x tan x. So you now know what that's going to integrate to. No. <laughs> no. How is it going to integrate to the exact same expression? <laughs> Times one over three times um, that's the power of four. That's the power of four. What about if it was just so sec x tan x? Oh, wait, oh, wait, what does that, um, that, goes, in, that goes into sec yeah. Yes. So it will be sec 3x, but then you need to count. Good. If you have done those four, very quickly differentiate them to check you've got the right answer. Oh, one over three, sec three. 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 Sec
Okay, I'm going to go through these ones so that I can let people then go on to the next part of it. So we've got e to the 3x plus 1 dx. Sufian, what does that differentiate? Uh, what does that integrate to? Sorry. Good. When I'm differentiating this, I would get the 3 from here and the third, which will multiply to just give me the 1. Okay. This one, um, perhaps a little bit trickier. This doesn't need to be written in index form. What is this one going to integrate to, Ruhan? Good. We know it's going to be an ln1 because we've got a version of 1 over x. The coefficient of x is minus 2, so we'll have to divide by minus 2, which is the same as multiplying by minus a half. Hisham, what did you get for this one? I like that you did it in this slightly longer stage that you've got here so we can see we get this 1 over 6 coming from the regular type of integration that we have there and then dividing by or multiplying by 1 over 3 to counteract the, the chain rule basically. We're actually trying to reverse some of that chain rule's process that's been happening. We're trying to counteract the chain rule by dividing instead. So you get minus 1 over 18, 4 minus 3x to the power of 6 plus c. Um, and then last of all, Sadia, what does sec 3x tan 3x dx integrate to? Good. We know that sec blah tan blah will integrate to sec blah, but it's going to be dividing by the derivative of that blah. This only works, this dividing by um, this dividing bit that we're doing at the beginning of all of these stages here, this only works when the functions that are inside the functions are of this form. This does not work if it was a 3x squared in here or if it was a um, e to the power of 3x cubed. It only works when it's of the form ax plus b inside the function. Okay, Please, please do not apply this in the future questions unless it is ax plus b, because I'm guaranteeing some of you are going to do that, and I'm going to hopefully we'll work out why that doesn't work. Maybe you can have a think about that now. Why wouldn't that work? But we'll see. So there are some questions for the last part of the lesson um, that I've put here where I can easily do the answers for these. So you can either do these on the board or you can just do these talking to each other um, and seeing what kind of answers you come up for this. You may not have enough space for some of this. So if you, run up, if you do run out of space, obviously you'll need to use some other paper and then you can record your answers on this piece of paper. Okay? So this is what we'll do for the rest of the lesson now.